So you want some Greek food and what better bread goes with Greek food than pita bread. And I'm gonna be showing you today how to make pita bread with 100% freshly milled wheat. Hey everyone, welcome back to Grains and Grit. My name is Felicia and if you're new here, welcome. I teach you all the things about real whole grains from a biblical perspective. And if you have been here before, Welcome back. I love having you here. So today I'm going to be showing y'all how I make pita bread with 100% freshly milled wheat and it still comes off soft and delicious and where you can bend it so it doesn't break whenever you fill it with your euros. First of all, we're gonna be talking about what pita bread exactly is in case you don't know what it goes well with, what type of wheat I'm gonna be using, some tips and tricks, and then we're gonna be getting to the actual recipe. So for those of you who wanna skip ahead, timestamps are down below if you wanna skip the things and get to the parts that you really like. And also just know that everything is down in the description box below. So the printable recipe for the pita bread will be there as well as you can grab some freebies that I have for you, sign up for our membership, follow me on Instagram, all the things always in the description box below. Before we get into the actual recipe, let's first of all talk about the diff what pita bread is, um, kind of what makes it pita, because when you see me make this, you might be wondering what's the difference between pita bread and like a flour tortilla. And the biggest difference is that a pita bread, the purpose is you want it to puff up um, when it when you're baking it and it involves yeast it does have yeast in it where flour tortillas have no yeast and they generally have a bit more fat in them as well and I'm still working on my flour tortillas with freshly milled wheat because we are very particular about them um, be, so be sure to watch out for a video about that in the future so the wheat that we are gonna be using is soft white wheat. I did find, I've experimented with different wheats, and I did find that the soft white wheat is what um, allowed it to have more of a softer, go figure, type texture to it. I have tried it with hard white wheat, and you can use that, but I found the soft white wheat to be softer. Other substitutes for soft white wheat is you could try this with spelt, um, although spelt generally has a bit more of a robust, like not grassy flavor, but it's just gonna be a different flavor. But spelt does act a lot like soft wheat, soft white wheat, but it is gonna be a different flavor. Um, you certainly probably could try kamu because kamu is a more milder tasting flour that also works very similar to soft white wheat as well. So if you do try this recipe with another wheat, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I'm also gonna be including a bonus recipe for you guys because with the pita breads, I love making euros with them. And I have literally the best tzatziki sauce recipe you have ever put in your mouth. <laughs> and I got it from the source. I have a friend of mine who is Greek. Her, she is Greek, her parents are Greek. She married a husband um, who is also Greek as well. And she made the tzatziki sauce for our end of the year celebration for a homeschool co-op and everyone loved it and I had to have the recipe. So be sure to check that out. We're not gonna be covering that in this video because it's super easy to make, but I do have it as a printable recipe in the description box below. And thank you so much to my dear friend who gave me this recipe and gave me permission to share it with all of y'all. So without further ado, let's get to the pita bread. So first we have to mill up the grains. This is Miss Nancy Nutrimill Harvest Stone Grind Mill. And you're gonna want six cups of soft white wheat berries to mill into about nine cups of flour. And then we're gonna take our flour over to our mixer. This is Miss Betsy Bosch Universal Mixer. You can do this by hand. And we're gonna add one and a half cups to two cups of our flour. Then we're gonna add one and a half teaspoons of sugar, two tablespoons of yeast instant or dry active yeast, and then three cups of warm water. Then we're going to mix that up and put a lid over it and we're gonna proof it for about 15 minutes. Once the 15 minutes are up, it should be nice and bubbly like you can see here. And we're gonna add in our third cup of olive oil and then two tablespoons of salt. And then we add in our flour. I like to get up to a total of about seven cups of flour and then we just mix that all together. And then from here, I start gradually adding the flour in until it starts pulling away from the bowl. So you just need to add in about a quarter cup at a time. Watch it because 
because you don't want to add too much flour that will make your dough way too hard and stiff so once in the mixer once it starts kind of pulling off the bowl then we start the kneading process and we're going to knead this in a machine by about six minutes five to six minutes you until it gets pretty soft if you're kneading this by hand may need to be a little bit longer but bottom line is you're wanting to get a nice soft pliable dough and this was me checking it at about five minutes and it wasn't quite soft enough for my liking um, it kind of just broke apart pretty easily and here we have a minute later and now it's softer not peeling apart or breaking apart as much so we're going to remove our dough hook and then I grease the bowl and then just put the dough back in and we're going to let it rise until double about 45 minutes and I did put a towel over it and here it is doubled in size and we're going to deflate the bowl and get ready to start rolling these out so here we are ready to roll these out and you're going to want to lightly dust your surface with flour and grab a dough about a little over the size of a golf ball and then this is a rolling pin i like to use a french rolling pin and we're going to just start rolling this as you can see it's a bit sticky so if it starts sticking to the counter add a teensy bit more flour if it starts sticking to your rolling pin like it is here you're going to need to dust your rolling pin but bottom line is you're going to want to roll these out very thin that is the key as you want them as very very thin like you see here because they are going to puff up in the oven and you don't want them too thick so again we're just going to roll it out with the rolling pin add flour if needed and then you just kind of keep turning this will take practice as you see i still do not have them in a perfect circle but you just keep going and you can tell that the dough is nice and soft because i'm able to tug on it and it not break apart as you see here and then we're going to put it on our pan and we are going to put it in a preheated 450 degree oven um, and here we are we're going to roll out some more and uh, now I actually do use all-purpose flour sometimes for dusting because I don't want to add too much flour so that's why you see the all-purpose flour out um, and in between rolling whenever they're in the oven you're going to want to keep them in the 450 degree oven for two minutes and then I like to flip them and bake for about another two minutes and we will see that in just a bit and as you can see here this is not turning out to be a good circle and so sometimes I just like to pick it up and kind of tug it around the sides if it breaks just kind of put it back together now here's where I like to store my tortillas this is actually a sorry pitas this is a tortilla basket lined with a towel um, that's covered you do want to do this and here they are out of the oven and we're going to put them in our basket to store and then cover it and this will soften the pitas even more and keep them warm so let's put these in the oven and here you see them in the oven you can see they're starting to puff up and again two minutes and then I flip them like you're gonna see here be very careful not to burn yourself like I did a couple of times um, and then we're gonna bake them for another two minutes and then remove them out and in case you're curious this is the meat that I am cooking for the euros tonight and here's another way to store it just in a nice bowl like this this is one of those receiving blankets i love these things and this also keeps them nice and warm and here they are you can see they've puffed up you can bend them they're not breaking and they are absolutely delicious this is the perfect thickness for euros because again they're not too thick you don't want them that way so there you have it y'all i would have a picture of what i served it for supper that night um but uh, my family kind of inhaled it and it was kind of quick because i do a lot of these recipe videos i'm making while i'm making i'm filming while i'm making supper so it's kind of difficult for me to get a full meal picture, but I served it with some meat that you saw me cooking up and I chopped that up into smaller bits. And we had it and basically made gyros with some chopped up lettuce, the tzatziki sauce, and simple, but it was so good. And then I served it with a brown rice that all I did with the brown rice is cook it um, and just throw in some bar butter, salt, and some parsley. So a very simple yet delicious rice to go with the robust flavor of the meat and the tzatziki sauce. And I will, if you're wanting to know what how I prepared my meat for euros, I'm gonna link a few recipes for you below because I just, use these recipes kind of as a guide. I still do, do my own thing when it comes to recipes, but those will be in the description box below for you as well. I hopefully you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you try this recipe and as, if you have any other requests for recipes, please let me know in the comments below. I have a running list and I'm getting to tortillas for you guys. 
it's coming. It's coming. I'm also working on grits. So it's coming <laughs> and chocolate cake. I know everyone's been asking for chocolate cake as well. So these are all recipes that I'm working on to get them out to you as fast as possible. So if you are looking for more recipe videos, be sure to subscribe, hit the like button, follow me on Instagram at grains and grit. And I hopefully y'all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.